everyone and welcome back. Today we are taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Rise of Tyranny 2-pack. And I gotta say, it's a very nice 2-pack actually. So, uh, which to start off with? Um, hmm. You know, we're gonna start off with Senator Ratbat. Because why not? I think this guy looks very cool. And while, yes, he is just another Scourge redeco, I actually very much like this, uh, this mold for the character. It, A, it is, it kind of makes sense in terms of the, you know, bat wings that the robot mode has, but also kind of feet, like, Scourge always had that vampire sort of aesthetic to him, so it makes sense that the vampire Transformer also kind of got, uh, you know, the Bat Transformer, <laughs> in a way. Um, now, I did slightly modify this guy a wee bit. All of the uh, gold that you see on the forearms here, on the side rivets, stuff like that, that's all stuff that I picked out myself because I figure this guy is super rich on Cybertron. He's not going to just have a base, you know, plain old color scheme no he's friggin rat bad he's able to read a room and know the stocks very well so he's very rich he's gonna look dapper as hell so i added a bit more gold to just kind of show off that this guy knows his money and he knows how how much to make his money woof for those of you who have seen those uh uh those very fun little videos there um, yeah, no, I very much like this guy. I do, I really like that head sculpt. It is a very nice head sculpt. He head sculpt? Head sculpt, sorry. And it's very reminiscent of, um, the Thrilling 30s, uh, version of, uh, rap, Senator Rapat that we got a couple years ago. A toy I don't have, but was very cool at the time. And, another fun fact, he was also a Scourge redeco, because he turned into a uh, stealth bomber. I think that's very cool. And they kind of kept that going on with this version of Ratbat. Now, I do love that head. It is very nice. Very indicative of what he will become. Uh, just in terms of like... Because it does kind of look... It gives off that feeling of it being... A rat head that has opened its mouth and... Oh, hey, look. Robot. Robot face. You know? And I think that looks very cool. The gold paneling here on the chest looks very nice. And I love the blue that they've inlaid in there, too. That just looks gorgeous. You have, again, just some more purple and black going down this figure. And again, like I said, I just picked out anything that you see that's kind of golden. That That's just something that I picked out because I figured... Make this guy look a little more fancy. And you have the back and here. And yes. Now, he did come with a gun, but I don't know where I put it. But he just came with, you know, Scourge gun. That, meh. Makes no sense to me why a senator would have a weapon, but eh, he's also one who funds the, uh, the gladiatorial pits. Yeah. And something I do also like having and, you know what I did in the thumbnail was have half of the cape kind of wrap around him. Just cause, just like that, uh, those, uh, you see those kind of regent people who think they're better than everyone else. They have that whole, look, my cape, my cape wraps around me. I'm so much more powerful than you. It does kind of mess with the back section and it looks kind of funny cause he just has most of his vehicle just hanging down, but it, I think it works as like a, a really nice flowy cape kind of thing and it makes sense instead of it just being, you know, all piled up here on his back. Yeah. Uh, for articulation, head is on a ball joint, so you get a full 360. He can look up about that far, down about that far, which is nice. You do get a full 360 out of the arm, which is awesome. He can do a suck it Magnus. You can actually go a lot further. Well, not a lot further, but a decent uh, amount further, which is very nice. You get a very nice bicep swivel, and you get just about 90 degree of bend there at the elbow. Very nice. 
and you get wrist rotation. Now, this one, this side's a little tight. Oh, no, actually, never mind. This version actually isn't as tight as I remember it being. You get a waist swivel, which is very nice, although wings do like to uh, pop out every now and again. Legs can go up that far, back that far, so they can't really go forward, though I don't imagine rat bats kicking many people. And you get about 90 degree of bend at the knee there, which is nice, and you get a little bit of foot tilt as well as claw feet, which is very, very nice. So, put him off to the side here for comparison. Here we have him next to the progenitor of the mold, Scourge. And they look very nice together. And we also have him next to his other senator friend, Senator Shockwave. And yeah, they look good. And just for shits and giggles, here he is next to his future self on Earth. Kind of a downgrade, if you ask me. There, now we have Ratbat right and Ratbat. Cute. Yeah, so there is that. And now we bring in, in my opinion, the star of this entire two-pack, Minor Megatron. Now, yes, I know. It's the Siege Megatron mold. We're sick of the Siege Megatron mold. I understand that. However... And yes, I understand those complaints are more levied against the uh, the newest two-pack that's coming out. <laughs> but guys, you gotta admit, this is a good friggin' mode or mold. Like, yeah, it's a it's an old one. I will admit, it's an old one. My arm. That actually has never <laughs> happened to me. Whoops. Sorry, Megs. There we go. Okay. That was a whoopsie. Um, <laughs> whoops. Uh, anyways, that, that doesn't count to my argument. This is just my version. My version's a little bit loose. Um, but I am honest. I, would I have liked to see a different mold used for, a uh, Megatron for his minor mode? I mean, yeah, it would have been kind of nifty, but again, they're just repackaging, um, uh, War for Cybertron Optimus and just kind of remolding him a wee bit. So, to be truly honest, they already had a Megatron that looked like what he did in the comics, what they were going for, and just added a couple added accessories. You know what? I am fine with that. And this guy is kind of like my reason as to why I am okay with that. Because I love this toy. It looks so nice. Like, I'm sorry, but this gray, that's not, it, on camera, it's kind of like a metallic gray, but in person, it's, it's like a grayish blue, actually. I'm not sure how well it's coming off on camera, but like, I love how, how beautiful this toy looks. Like, this deco is just gorgeous. You have the very nice, like, you have the Megatron, you know, square chest plate, but you also have the three kind of small prongs there they make him look very very industrial and very much like he is meant for mining and like mine work and i love that it's all about the character for you know this character and like the mold itself works for it like it really does like even though they're working backwards from an alt mode that was already like a military tank and then reworked it into, you know, a drill tank or a drill or just a mining drill. I think that works because it shows that Megatron isn't leaving his past behind him. He's taking that with him while also augmenting it for more combat roles. And I kind of love the Energon X too. It's pretty. Though something I've always been questioning, like I, I know pink is usually... Um, you know, the, the base Energon color uh, for refined Energon. But I'm so used to it being like blue or red or something. When I see or pink and purple Energon, my brain instantly goes to, <gasps> Dark Energon! He's mining Dark Energon! <laughs> the corruptive force started early with this one. But no, it works. And I, I 
honestly really do like this uh, this Energon pickaxe. It looks very nice. It is very well molded too. Like you have this entire section here that kind of rem it reminds me of um, what was it? Uh, like a smokestack with the grooves and the way that they are all kind of implemented. Um, and then you also have just a very nice axe head in general i think this looks very nice and very very cool you can also stick it on the back like so so you can kind of get that uh the megatron back antenna look kind of going uh you can you know store it right here give him a uh you know kind of a tiny drill kind of sort of aside from his other big drill but yeah there's that i love i also really love that head sculpt they i think they reused the um oh gosh what was it um i think it was the combat megatron head which i think is very nice i think it makes him look a lot younger and a lot more um kind of bright-eyed i guess in a way, and I think that's very cool. The way that they've picked out the um, the head here in red looks very nice. I love the caution. I love just all the small details on this guy that just kind of help him like retain that Megatron aspect of him, but also adds in just a little bit more. It makes him seem more noble in a way, if that makes any sense. Like th This looks like a noble Megatron who is trying to fight for the people and doesn't kind of lose his way or at least before he lost his way anyways but yes uh for articulation he has a ball joint at the head so he can look kind of around he is a bit limited unfortunately he can look up about that far or if you want to break his neck he can look all the way up he can look down about that far though now he's poking into his chest you get a very nice suck it magnus out of him you get a bicep rotation which is awesome just about 90 degree of bend at the elbow and in and out wrists thanks to transformation you get a waist swivel which is nice legs can go up that far back about that far and you get just over 90 degree of bend there at the knee and you get any outy feet and the big clawed hoppers yeah so that is that for Megatron. So we'll move him off to the side. We'll zoom out a bit more. There we go. There we go. There we go. And we will bring in Megatron after a couple of years. And, oh boy, the years were not kind to this boy. So here we have him next to his future self. And, uh, yeah, dark unfortunate you can see just kind of what they uh all the changes that megatron kind of went through just like just in story alone yeah my this guy's knee's a little wonky uh which is unfortunate but still really cool so there's that here we have him next to galvatron because why not and i also don't have earthrise Megatron, and I don't want to see that toy. <laughs> Though I won't lie, the Platinum Deco does look good for the bridge crew. Anyways, that goes. And here we have him next to his friend, Orion Pax. That stand, Megatron. You're not a weak... Optimus and Megatron, stand up. There we go. Should I be calling him Megatron or should I be calling him D16? I can't remember. Anyways, there's that. Now, for a transformation, we will start off with this boy, and then we'll do Ratbat. So, for Minor Megatron, all you're going to want to do is take off the big drill, flip in the hands, and straighten up the arms. You want to untab the entire backpack. It'll most likely untab itself. Bring out the nice big treads. Like so, and like so. Come on. There we go. And you want to fold in the entire back or front panel here. Like so. 
and it will just tab into the blade or into the uh, sides of the top. Into the sides of the top, yes, that makes total sense. You want to open up the arms, just kind of get them out of the way, you can play with them however you want. Rotate the waist 360, spread the legs. That sounded like a Jobby the Hong joke, and I did not mean it that way. <laughs> Rotate the legs into each other, connect them like so. Do the same on the other side, in, rotate, and around, connect it in, close it up, just kind of play around, make sure that everything is properly placed together, there we go, and now for the really fun bit, and actually we're going to move that down, there we go, there we go, sorry, I had to play with the camera a bit, alright, here comes the fun bit. So, you open up the arms once again, you want to take the axe, break it apart, and then there are two tabs right here and here, and they will tab into each side of the shoulder, like so and like so. And then you want to take the drill bit, and you can just tab that in, and then for the arm, it's, or for the, uh, I, I like to rotate them out like that, just so it gives a little bit more of a different cohesion and with the uh, other head you can or the axe head you can tab it in right up top here if you want or you can tab it onto the side just for weapon storage and here you have the drill mode we'll put that off to the side actually we'll take that out and we will bring back in rat bat zoop and so, with Ratbat, we basically rip out his entire back section here, like so. And we fold up his little head protector thing. Make sure that the other back section kind of falls out, just like so and like so. Fold that up. There we are. And then we take the arms, break them out, and break it out and down. Connect the feet together. Like so, fold in the feet, Oop. there we go, connect the arms to the legs, through the ports, there we go, there we go, and then we connect the head to, the, or the entire back section, then we just fold up and fold out. Very smooth, very predictable transformation for another progenitor of the sweep mold, but it is still a fun, quick conversion that I very much enjoy. There we go. And here we have Senator Ratbat in his space barge. Or, sorry, sorry. Space yacht mode. And I gotta say, I very much like this alt mode. Yes, I know it's the space tug, but... Or, as I alluded to, the space yacht... Uh, because he's fancy, 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 man. Um, I actually really like the kind of... And it's weird how much gold he has in robot mode, i.e. just a big-ass gold chest plate. And that's all I'm referring to. Anything else is my modification. But how big the, uh, the gold symbol here is on his chest. And then you have just the smaller deco version of it just here on... Uh, uh, I guess the cockpit area. I don't know where I well space whatever doesn't really need a cockpit. The the face cover slot. The thing that, you know, covers his face for uh when he's flying. Um but yeah, I I, I can understand this guy and Scourge actually being from the same era. And the reason why I can kind of go into that and I'm apologizing in advance for getting fan theory here. The alt modes themselves are reminiscent of a golden age of Cybertron, and I'm using Scourge origin, Scourge's origins from uh, the comic books here just to help me get through that. Very svelte, uh, clean, very energy kind of deficient, I guess you could say, um, with the you know three thrusters here showing that 
uh, energon is plentiful and that you don't have to worry about it. Um, you have a little bit more of a different, more svelte, clean uh, alt mode here for Ratbat because let's he obviously had more modifications done to his alt mode to make it more uh, slender and sleek, more quick and dynamic. You can even fold down, like you can do it here, but it doesn't really help for uh, Scourge. But having it, uh, the engines kind of move up and down for his vehicle mode kind of helps make it seem like he can go a lot faster than he probably could. And I just realized this guy's feet did not go in the correct position. One second. Sorry about that. There we are. I got it. Um, and I, I just, I really think that's... A, it, it's all about the storytelling with the characters and the way that you can tell a story through both their robot and their vehicle mode, through their color schemes, where they kind of get their ideas from. And you can see from both of these uh, alt modes, yes, they're, you know, two different, um, from two different eras, so to speak. You can see where the similarities come from. They both, they kind of represent a wealth I guess, of, uh, of Energon, of knowledge, things like that, things that they can fly above, you know, the, the regular class citizens of Cybertron. And it's, it's just fascinating how you can tell a story with just a vehicle mode and something as simple as the space tug, where you have the working class tug and the luxury yacht. Like, even, like, even the curve of the hood is a little bit more pronounced on Ratbat's, um, on Ratbat's alt mode because of just the added little bit of paint there, and I think that's really cool. Anyways, we're getting rid of that, and we're bringing in another politician. Yay, politicians! We love those. Yay. Um, <laughs> and you something that I've kind of noticed, and it was. And it's just kind of something that I realized while mainly looking at these two and also uh, Alpha Trion, who also used the Space Tug mode. Um, and my other pick for a senator being Starscream. Anyone kind of notice a lot of the senators on in um, in Transformers usually have a, fly, uh, a flight alt mode, not a ground-based alt mode? Unless you have a Prime being, you know... Sentinel, um, Nemesis, or not Nemesis, um, Sentinel Prime, Zeta Prime, uh, friggin, uh, oh god, what was his name? Um, oh god, the guy with the angel wings, oh my god. Anyways, that guy, they all had, you know, those primes all had ground-based alt modes, but that was more to cater to Optimus, in a way. But story-wise, and something that I like in Transformers 1, they're all flyers. They all have that heightened superiority just because, oh, hey, we can fly. What can a ground-based vehicle do? What what could a ground bot do that we can't? Or that, um... That we shouldn't have to sully ourselves by putting our feet on the ground. And something that, just some stuff like that I think is very cool for dynamic storytelling. And it's really just the character. And just kind of the toy. So, again, very cool. I like the, diff the, the differences between them. There's that. Here we have Megatron in tank mode. And again, I know it's just the tank, but with a drill bit. But again, going off of the whole storytelling idea. I love it. It makes sense that Megatron, who started life as a mining bot, wouldn't want to change his alt mode too much to fit into what society would deem him to be as a leader. He had a tank mode. He fought in the gladiatorial arena, so he would have to change up a small amount so, to give him an edge in the com in combat, i.e. his fusion cannon. And then adding smaller, more armored bits to himself to protect his shoulders, uh, you know, from, uh, from wear and tear. 
So it's something that I, I like the storytelling of, oh yes, we can still use the same mold for the same character three different times and not really change it much. Is it lazy? Yes, it is. 100%, I agree with you there. It's lazy, it's yada yada yada. Though it helps with the storytelling and it shows that Megatron himself cares a lot about how he is perceived. And not in a vain way, but in a way that's like, these are my roots. This is where I am coming from. Piss off if you don't understand that. And while that message is lost when we bring in War Torn, I'm going to shoot the shit out of you, Megatron, with a big ass cannon. The fact that he still kind of keeps just the base. Like, if we get rid of both of these, both kind of. Heavy weapons of mass destruction here. Get rid of those. And just leave the base as is. The only thing, aside from color, that Megatron here has changed... Are the shoulders and... Well, just his shoulders and his arms. That's it. That's all he has changed throughout... How many years? How many thousands of years has this guy been... Parading himself around? Normally when... Like, if you look at people like Optimus, how many uh, forms has he taken? Like, just in the toy mode, and specifically for, like, this kind of general era, and in my, just the way that I show, the Orion, the two different Orion packs is Twinks and Swole, and then you have the Optimus Prime mold. Three completely different vehicles for, uh, again, different situations. I, I completely understand that. But just, it shows that Optimus kind of changes depending on, cert, like, on key factors. While Megatron himself will change small aspects of himself for bigger aspects. Again, that being the big-ass fusion cannon in place of his drill. And something that I do kind of like is that if you take off, you know, the big gun here, you can actually put, kind of put the drill on. So Megatron now has the big boy drill. And it looks, it, it just, it looks funny. That's all. There's that. Put that off. And there's that. We'll uh, put together his drill bit again. I'm not going to put on the, uh, the axe head. Just because I don't feel like that is needed. There's that. There's that. Here we have him again with Galvatron. And now again, in terms of, you know, lore-wise and where you're going with it, depending on the story, Galvatron is either Megatron reborn from Unicron or he is an ancient Cybertronian. I'm still up in the air on where I want my Galvatron to be. Um, But just in terms of, like, you, you can now see... After Megatron finally, well not finally, but after Megatron actually loses his mind in a way, the alt mode changes from something that even that still closely resembles what he used to look like when he was trying to fight for the people before, you know, the war and everything. And now he is quite literally... A weapon of mass destruction, or, you know, if we're going to use the cliche, an instrument of destruction here. So, uh, again, it's just, it's nice storytelling that I like. Maybe I should... Eh. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to discuss stuff like that. Um, added just the toy reviews. Um, just because I feel like I'm... Especially with the Cybertronian modes. Anyways, here's Optimus, so again, they look cute. Bring in Rat Bat again. Oh, right. I forgot to show off. The uh, the one you've all been waiting for. The comparison that I know everybody wants to see. Of course, of course. Rat Bat and Rat Bat as a cassette. Once again, a beautiful comparison. And I like how even this version... Oop, I dropped him. Even this version of Rat Bat has a bit of gold. <laughs> no matter what happens, Rat Bat still demands at least a little bit of gold. But yes, so that is it for my uh, my review on the Rise of Tyranny 2-pack. Again, I, 
uh, I know I started talking, you know, a little bit more rambly about stories, elements, and stuff like that. Honestly, let me know if you guys want to see a little bit more of that. I might be able to work something out. Um, just in terms of that. Because I wouldn't mind actually giving it a shot. But I, I don't want to, you know, put a whole lot of stuff in. And, you know, just let me know if you guys want to hear a little bit more. If not, totally fair. But I would love to hear your, uh, your opinions. Because that does kind of help with the algorithm. But I'm not going to do the other plug stuff. That's just for me to know. So, I hope you all have a good rest of your day, night, or whenever you watch this video. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye everyone. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Rise of Tyranny 2-pack. And I gotta say, it's a very nice 2-pack actually. So, uh, which to start off with? Um, hmm... You know, we're going to start off with Senator Ratbat. Because why not? I think this guy looks very cool. And while, yes, he is just another Scourge Redeco, I actually very much like this, uh, this mold for the character. It, A, it is, it kind of makes sense in terms of the, you know, bat wings that the robot mode has, but also kind of feet, like, Scourge always had that vampire sort of aesthetic to him, so it makes sense that the vampire Transformer also kind of got, uh, you know, the Bat Transformer, <laughs> in a way. Um, now, I did slightly modify this guy a wee bit. All of the uh, gold that you see on the forearms here, on the side rivets, stuff like that, that's all stuff that I picked out myself because... I figure this guy is super rich on Cybertron. He's not gonna just have a base, you know, plain old color scheme. No, he's friggin' rat bad. He's able to read a room and know the stocks very well. So he's very rich. He's gonna look dapper as hell. So I added a bit more gold to just kind of show off that this guy knows his money. And he knows how... How much to make his money woof? For those of you who have seen those, uh, uh, those very fun little videos there. Um, yeah, no, I very much like this guy. I do, I really like that head sculpt. It is a very nice head sculpt. He head sculpt? Head sculpt, sorry. And it's very reminiscent of, um, the thrilling 30s, uh, version of, uh, rap Senator Ratbat that we got a couple years ago. A toy I don't have, but was very cool at the time. And, another fun fact, he was also a Scourge Redeco, because he turned into a uh, stealth bomber. I think that's very cool. And they kind of kept that going on with this version of Ratbat. Now, I do love that head. It is very nice, very indicative of what he will become. Uh... Just in terms of like, because it does kind of look, it gives off that feeling of it being a rat head that has opened its mouth and, oh, hey, look, robot, robot face, you know? And I think that looks very cool. The gold paneling here on the chest looks very nice. And I love the blue that they've inlaid in there too. That just looks gorgeous. You have again, just some more purple and black going down this figure. And again, like I said, I just picked out anything that you see that's kind of golden. That That's just something that I picked out because I figured make this guy look a little more fancy. And you have the back and here. And yes. Now, he did come with a gun, but I don't know where I put it. But he just came with, you know, Scourge gun. That, meh. Makes no sense to me why a senator would have a weapon, but eh, he's also one who funds the... Uh, the gladiatorial pits. Yeah. And something I do also like having and, you know, what I did in the thumbnail was have half of the cape kind of wrap around him. Just cause, just like that, uh, those, uh, you see those kind of regent people who think they're better than everyone else. They have that whole, look my cape. 
My cape wraps around me. I'm so much more powerful than you. It does kind of mess with the back section. And it looks kind of funny because he just has most of his vehicle just hanging down. But it, I think it works as like a, a really nice flowy cape kind of thing. And it makes sense. Instead of it just being, you know, all piled up here on his back. Yeah. Uh, for articulation, head is on a ball joint. So you get a full 360. He can look up about that far, down about that far, which is nice. You do get a full 360 out of the arm, which is awesome. You can do a Suck It Magnus. You can actually go a lot further. Well, not a lot further, but a decent uh, amount further, which is very nice. You get a very nice bicep swivel, and you get just about 90 degree of bend there at the elbow. Very nice. And you get wrist rotation. Now, this one, this side's a little tight. Oh, no, actually... Never mind, this version actually isn't as tight as I remember it being. You get a waist swivel, which is very nice, although wings do like to uh, pop out every now and again. Legs can go up that far, back that far, so they can't really go forward, though I don't imagine rat bats kicking many people. And you get about 90 degree of bend at the knee there, which is nice, and you get a little bit of foot tilt as well as claw feet. Which is very, very nice. So, put him off to the side here for comparison. Here we have him next to the progenitor of the mold, Scourge. And they look very nice together. And we also have him next to his other senator friend, Senator Shockwave. And yeah, they look good. And just for shits and giggles here he is next to his future self on earth kind of a downgrade if you ask me there now we have rap bat riding rap bat cute yeah so there is that and now we bring in in my opinion the star of this entire two-pack minor megatron now yes i know it's the Siege Megatron mold. We're sick of the Siege Megatron mold. I understand that. However, and yes, I understand those complaints are more levied against the uh, the newest two-pack that's coming out. <laughs> but guys, you got to admit, this is a good friggin' mode or mold. Like, yeah, it's a, it's an old one. I will admit, it's an old one. My arm! That actually has never <laughs> happened to me. Whoops. Sorry, Megs. There we go. Okay. That was a whoopsie. Um. <laughs> whoops. Uh, anyways. That, that doesn't count to my argument. This is just my version. My version's a little bit loose. Um, but I am honest. I, would I have liked to see a different mold used for, a? Uh, Megatron for his minor mode? I mean, yeah. It would have been kind of nifty, but again, they're just repackaging um, uh, War for Cybertron Optimus and just kind of remolding him a wee bit. So, to be truly honest, they already had a Megatron that looked like what he did in the comics, what they were going for, and just added a couple added accessories. You know what? I am fine with that. And this guy is kind of like my reason as to why I am okay with that. Because I love this toy. It looks so nice. Like, I'm sorry, but this gray, that's not... it. On camera, it's kind of like a metallic gray. But in person, it's, it's like a grayish blue, actually. I'm not sure how well it's coming off on camera. But, like, I love how... <laughs> how beautiful this toy looks like this deco is just gorgeous you have the very nice like you have the megatron you know square chest plate but you also have the three kind of small prongs there they make him look very very industrial and very much like he is meant for mining and like mine work and i love that it's all about the character for you know this character and like the mold itself works for it like it really does like even though they're working backwards from an alt mode that was already like a military tank 
and then reworked it into, you know, a drill tank or a drill or just a mining drill. I think that works because it shows that Megatron isn't leaving his past behind him. He's taking that with him while also augmenting it for more combat roles. And I kind of love the Energon X too. It's pretty. Though something I've always been questioning, like I, I know pink is usually, um, you know, the, the base Energon color uh, for refined Energon, but I'm so used to it being like blue or red or something when I see pur or pink and purple Energon, my brain instantly goes to oh, Dark Energon! He's mining Dark Energon! <laughs> the corruptive force started early with this one. But no, it works, and I... I honestly really do like this uh, this Energon pickaxe. It looks very nice. It is very well molded too. Like you have this entire section here that kind of rem it reminds me of um, what was it uh, like a smokestack with the grooves and the way that they are all kind of implemented. Um, and then you also have just a very nice axe head in general. I think this looks very nice and very very cool. You can also. Stick it on the back like so so you can kind of get that uh the Megatron back antenna look kind of going uh, You can you know store it right here Give him a uh, You know kind of a tiny drill Kind of sort of aside from his other big drill But yeah, there's that I, lo I also really love that head sculpt. They, I think they reused the, um, oh gosh, what was it? Um, I think it was the Combat Megatron head, which I think is very nice. I think it makes him look a lot younger and a lot more um, kind of bright-eyed, I guess, in a way. And I think that's very cool, the way that they've picked out the um, the head here in red looks very nice. I love the caution. I love just all the small details on this guy that just kind of help him like retain that Megatron aspect of him, but also adds in just a little bit more. It makes him seem more noble in a way, if that makes any sense. Like th this looks like a noble Megatron who is trying to fight for the people and doesn't kind of lose his way or at least before he lost his way anyways but yes uh for articulation he has a ball joint at the head so he can look kind of around he is a bit limited unfortunately he can look up about that far or if you want to break his neck he can look all the way up he can look down about that far though now he's poking into his chest you get a very nice suck it magnus out of him you get a bicep rotation which is awesome just about 90 degree of bend at the elbow and in and out wrists thanks to transformation you get a waist swivel which is nice legs can go up that far back about that far and you get just over 90 degree of bend there at the knee and you get any outy feet and the big clawed hoppers yeah so that is that for Megatron. So we'll move him off to the side. We'll zoom out a bit more. There we 